Where's the Dragon? Written by Jason Hook, illustrator Richard Hook, read by Andrew Schmidt. Each and every year, on the first day of summer, little George hurried off to visit his grandfather. The old man had a dog named Meg, and a workshop full of wonders. He could carve anything George asked him to. Kites, clocks, flutes, fiddles, and wonderful wooden dragons. And as he carved, Grandfather told amazing tales about an enormous old dragon who lived in the mountains. His tales seemed so real that George felt he could almost see the dragon. But this year, as Grandfather finished his tales, George asked, Do you think perhaps I'm too old to believe in dragons? Seeing is believing, cried Grandfather. It's time I took you on a dragon hunt. He asked George to carry all sorts of strange things down to his boat, a telescope, an umbrella, a magnifying glass, and an ancient yellow map. Finally, Grandfather put on a hat with a long, fluffy feather. This, he chuckled, is my dragon hunting hat. Off they sailed to hunt for the dragon. George was so full of questions, it was a wonder he didn't burst. Is he a big dragon? asked George. As big as the sky, roared Grandfather. He must be easy to see, said George. No, no, not at all, said Grandfather. To see a dragon, you must hunt high and low, and always believe hard enough. When night fell, they tied up in the boat and found a nice place to sleep. As they settled down on the river bank, George, Grandfather and Meg stared up at the dark sky. Look, Grandfather whispered George, pointing up at the stars. What's that winking in the sky? Ah, yes, sighed Grandfather. What a beautiful moon. They all slept well. They all dreamed of dragons, and Meg snored so loudly that the ground seemed to shake and shudder. In the morning, Grandfather's boat had vanished into thin air. Was it the dragon? George wondered. Not at all, grumbled Grandfather, who was a little short-sighted. Dragons always leave footprints. And dragons always live on mountaintops, said Grandfather, striding off up a path. A tail, a tail, George cried, trying to catch up with the old man. We've no time for tails, puffed Grandfather. There's a dragon to hunt. Do dragons breathe fire, panted George. Not at all, wheezed Grandfather, taking off his dragon-hunting hat and mopping his brow. My, but it's hot today. As they reached the top of the mountain, George was sure he believed in dragons. He pointed and shouted, His eye! Yes, it is high, said Grandfather, who was a little hard of hearing. Dragons always live up high. The mouth! shrieked George. Of a cave! shouted Grandfather. So that's where the dragon's hiding. And with that, he leapt into the darkness, waving his umbrella about his head. George yelled out. Meg barked. But it was too late. Perhaps it was dragon hay fever. Perhaps it was a dragon cold. Most likely it was the long fluffy feather on Grandfather's dragon hunting hat. Whatever it was, it made the dragon sneeze. A sneeze that shook the mountain. Quite a breeze blowing, bellowed Grandfather, as he somersaulted over their heads. The dragon hunt was over. Next year, we'll hunt higher and lower, and believe even harder, cried Grandfather. Then we're sure to see the dragon. Of course, chuckled George, holding Grandfather's hand and winking at Meg. After all, seeing is believing. How many dra hidden dragons did you find in this book? The answer is at Grandfather's house.